Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to configure VLAN and inter-VLAN routing on a 40 gig firewall. Let's begin. Before um, we start this video, uh, I would like to encourage you to click on the subscribe button. This is to encourage me to keep creating more videos such as this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to log in to my firewall. This firewall is already pre-configured with the interfaces and also it also has some policy object that was also created for the interface. So as you can see here, I have a LAN interface, I have a WAN interface and they both have an IP address. I also have um, the CPIP, uh, DSP configuration as well on them. So in this case here, I'm going to configure um, VLAN on this LAN interface. There are so many ways to actually configure VLAN. One of the best way I find very interesting is to use no IP address on this physical interface um, and then configure VLAN on the sub interface. So I'm going to click on the LAN port, double click on it, and then um, I'm going to remove this um, IP address on this interface. Now you notice this, I actually set it to 0 0.0.0.0.0, which is actually also the same as dot slash zero slot dot zero dot zero dot zero as well. So whichever format you want to use, both of them works. So I highlight it this way using the CIDR value. I'm going to turn off ping in from that interface, HTTPS of that interface. Um, then I'm also going to turn off the CP on that interface. I do not need anything on that physical interface. I'm going to click OK. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cre create a new interface. And this time around, I'm basically going to be creating VLAN. Let's just that the type of interface I'm creating here is a VLAN interface. So VLAN, you give it a name. You can say VLAN 5, you can say, um, you can name it based on the department, let's say accounting VLAN. It's basically your choice. The most important thing is the VLAN ID. So we can say accounting VLAN is VLAN 5 and we are actually configuring it. Remember, we're using the LAN port. So we're going to choose LAN port and then I'm going to move the IP address that I had earlier 192.168.183.254. Um, so I'm using the slash 24. I'm going to move that IP address I have on that physical interface, which was what I removed. I'm going to move that to my virtual interface, which is going to be the IP address will belong to accounting VLAN now. So the role will be LAN, and then um, we're going to enable. Um, ping on it we're gonna if you want to be able to access it using um, the web browser just like this you're gonna enable the https if you want to access it using ssh as well if you want to be able to um, monitor using uh, software like Orvik um, or PRTG or all that kind of monitoring software uses an MP. So um, you can enable some of the things that you think you need. I'm going to leave it at this. I'm going to configure a DHCP server. In this case, here, I'm just going to make this very simple. I'm just going to start with uh, 100 and I'm going to stop at 150. I'm actually not going to do more than that. There, notice that I leave out um, 1 to 99 and leave out 151 to 253 because 254 is already assigned to this interface here. I'm going to use the same gateway, which is going to be this one here. I'm going to use um, the same DNS, which is the DNS that is configured here. If you want to specify DNS, you could just click here and add the DNS that you want to use. Like in this case, you could just say it, it would. I don't want to do that. I just want to use the same DNS. So I'm going to change this to um, a day. And then um, make sure that this is enabled and then click OK. So that, um, 
of drip set yeah because this is actually trial version um i have some limitation on the number of objects i can set uh let me quickly make some corrections to that give me a moment so let me just explain what is basically going on what is actually going on here is because this is a, uh, an evaluation um uh, version um, I'm limited to three interfaces. So I have the ISP interface, I have the LAN port, I have the port three. So um, creating the, as, um, a VLAN interface as well is considered as four interfaces. So that wouldn't work. So I'm going to remove this, um, uh, what's it called? This uh, port three. I'm going to remove it out of the um, my network interface. So that would allow me to, to create the VLAN. Okay, so as you can see, I've been able to remove the interface. You might be wondering, what did I do? How did I remove the interface? Because this is a VM on my AXI host. What I just did was to shut down um, my um, FortiGate, and then I went to edits, and then I remove um, the other interfaces that were, that were there. I just left only these two interfaces here. So that allows me to be able to create um, so that will allow me to, to um, create my VLAN. So in this case, I have two physical interfaces. Before now, I have more than two. So um, with this, now we can actually continue what we're creating. So I'm going to create a new interface. Uh, <clears throat> like we rightly named earlier, Accounting VLAN. And then um, we are using the physical interface. We said it was VLAN 5. And um, we gave it uh, 192.168.183.254 slash 24. And then um, we allow it to ping. And we allow SSH, we allow HR GPS, we allow SNMP. And we created a DCP um, server IP range. And then we name it from 100 to 150. And then um, we change the list time. And then um, we let the DNS the way it is. We make sure it's enabled. We click OK. And you notice in this case, it was created. So um, all I'm trying to say is that because <clears throat> this is a v, this is an evaluation version, um, we won't be able to create more than three physical interfaces, as in three interfaces, whether physical or logical. So in this case here, as you can see, um, my VLAN is created. If I try to recreate a new VLAN, you're going to have that same object error. Let's say, for example, we name this sales. VLAN, and then we say um, the interface is basically going to be the LAN interface, and then let's call this VLAN 6. Um, let's name this 192.168.184.254 slash 24, and then uh, we could allow this as well just the same way or we just only allow ping on it whichever one but i want to just make it the same thing and then um um configure dscp on it let's say begin from 100 stop at 150 um then um change this to 86400 and then make sure it's enabled if you click, click ok you'll see that the error come back, comes back again so basically it's telling you you can have more than three interfaces so the fourth one is actually not allowed so there's nothing you can do is basically the limitation for um the evaluation license so if you have a license you definitely could create as many interfaces as you want all right, so we're just going to work with the three interfaces we have. We have um, we have um, what's it called? We have ISP. We have a VLAN. What I can do is since I since I have what's it called? Um, since I can only use three interfaces, what I can do is I can actually configure IP address on the LAN port as well. So you could actually um still use a LAN port in this case so let's use this 184.254 slash 24 uh let me name this 182 okay and then um i'm gonna allow the LAN ports to have 
Compose Access. I'm also going to configure a DCP on the LAN port as well. And that's what we came from 100, and that will stop at 150. Now, there is no rule that says this can begin from 1 or from 2 because we're basically using the last available, available IP address in the subnets. So there's no rule that says it can begin from 1 or 2. So in this case here, we're just do, using this as an, as, an, as an example. So it's, it's depending on the number of IP addresses you want in your subnets, that's where you're going to create <clears throat> the range. So you don't really leave too much uh, available IP address that you're not really using. It's, it's, they're still there. You can always extend them if you want to, so you, that um, those devices that need IP can get the IP address, and those you do, those that don't need IP address, like all those rogue devices that connect to your network, will not be getting any IP address. So I'm just going to click on OK. So right now, if, as you can see, I have a physical interface, and physical, I have an IP address on my physical interface, an IP address on my virtual interface, or my VLAN interface. Now, it's very important for you to understand that uh, I made a mistake here. I was wondering why it was showing me is a Netherlands IP. I just noticed that I wrote 16 instead of 168. So that address is actually a public address. I need to make a correction to that. It's supposed to be 168, not 16. Um, when you make corrections to that, you need to be sure that your DCP also had the correct information. Notice in this case, it doesn't. So this is going to be 168, and this is going to be 168. Now, sometimes it's always very good to make some mistake during training. When in live environment, you don't want to make this kind of um, mistake. All right. So here, I wanted to once I say notice that the Netherlands logo is no longer showing because this is now a private IP address. It's basically saying that this address that you're seeing here is a private IP. So here we have two interfaces. One is a physical, one is a virtual. So um, this is how you create your VLAN just by coming to create new interface and then selecting the VLAN number and the um, alias name, which is the name the um, interface will be ad identifiers. Notice this says VLAN. Notice this says physical interface. So you can identify a physical interface, which is this one here, from a virtual interface, virtual LAN. So this is what we have. So next thing you're going to do, which is very important, is that you're going to create a firewall policy. So the firewall policy is what will allow communication from your VLAN. So for example, if you have um, users in accounting VLAN, for example, what do you want them to have access to? Do you want them to have access to the internet? If you want them to have access to the internet only, this is what you do. Access to the internet only, this is what we'll do. We'll go to firewall policy and we create, and then we'll say, Accounting to ISP. Please remember this naming is basically whatever you want to name it as, however you want to name. So we're going to say incoming, coming from accounting, going to the ISP. The source is the accounting VLAN address, and then the destination is going to hall because it's going out. Then um, the services, which also going to be all. Then it's, we're going to be using NAT to go to the internet, definitely. Uh, you go turn on your antivirus, your DNS filter, your application control, your IPS. These are the defaults when you can basically edit them. We could look at all this, um, uh, what's it called? Profiles, later security profile, later and make some changes. But for now, um, we're just going to leave it the way it is. Um, as you can see, the, this is the current uh, state of the antivirus scan. Um, you also have the web filter. Um, the, this is what you have. You basically have some of the monitoring and so on like that. So for now, we're not going to go deep into that. So you could actually um, change the security profile. Of course, they're somewhere here. Um, for now, we're just going to leave it that way and then make sure the policy is enabled. We click OK. So what that does is that it creates a profile for accounting that allows it to transverse the traffic over the internet. So this 
role it's very important for users in accounting to go outside to the internet now you remember this video is about interview and communication now because we were not able to create more than um one vlan i'm just going to make an assumption that this is also um a lan of a virtual lan <laughs> like let's say you're using a license version of course you have more than two vlan so let's say i want to create a traffic i want to route traffic between these two network interface here between my lan and my account so i want people in my lan network to have access to my account network and i want the same thing from account network to have access to my lan network so what you're going to do is you're going to go back to policy and object firewall policy we're going to create this time we're going to create a policy that allow the lan to accountant so any traffic coming from the LAN and is going to accounting. The source is my LAN, which is basically my port 2. And um, the destination is accounting. Notice in this case, I'm not using all. And then the service here, I wanted to be able to go through all ports. They, whether they want to do HTTPS, they want to ping, they want to do DNS, whatever they want to do, POP, whatever they want to do. In this case, I'm going to disable NAT. I do not need NAT in between the two um, um, interfaces. So here, you, you, I also do not need um, this, but you can as well turn them on if you want. Uh, basically donated but you can turn them on if you have them customized so any traffic coming from your land to your accounting <laughs> you also want the web filter dns filter whatever option you want it's basically your, your choice if you don't if you don't turn them on it's also fine so we're logging this time we just want to log all session of traffic and then make sure the policy is enabled and then click ok so what happens here Oh, yeah, that's also another limitation. The maximum number of entry has been reached. Uh, that's because I have, let me see, I have four policies. Uh, yeah, there's those are, those are serious limitation for the, the evolution period. Let me see if I can try that again. Um, I was trying doing um, account, um, sorry, LAN to accounting i have um a particular one i did in the last video that i need to do, remove to give me access to the number of policy i can create so here it's coming from my lan which is my port 2 and then my um destination is my accounting so here hall and then turn off nats and then um, we said you can turn some of this on if you want. Um, then um, we log in all the sessions and then we ensure the policy is enabled. Click on OK. Notice this time it worked. The reason why it worked is because now I have three policies, one, two, three. So um, earlier I had three. One of them was the disabled, which I had to remove. And that particular policy is actually it mixed it four when I created the next one. So, and that actually um, was against the um, the free or the evaluation uh, policy, which basically means I can create more than three interfaces, more than three policy, and so on like that. So in this case here, this allowed traffic to go from the land to the accounting. But note this, traffic will not be able to come from accounting to the land. If you want traffic to come from accounting to the land, what you would do is to create new, you can say accounting to land. Now, sometimes you don't want traffic to come from accounting into your land, but you want your land to go to your accounting, which whichever reason why you're doing that is basically up to you. But in this case, please note, I won't be able to complete this because of the limitation, but we're still gonna go through this step. So here we're coming from accounting, we're going to the LAN. Notice my LAN is port two, that's why you see me saying uh, port two address here earlier. So my source is my accounting VLAN address, my destination is my port two address. So, and then I'm using all services. I've explained that to you. So turn off NAT, we do not need NAT. And um, as, like I said, you could use any of these and you could choose not to use them. You could use some of them or none of them. Then uh, you could log all the policy, make sure this is enabled and then we click OK. And now it gives us, gives us a maximum entry has been raised. So even if I turn, let me see if I turn it off. 
Yeah, even if the office is not going to work. So um, policy has to be enabled anyway. So basically, this is what to do on how to create it. So this would allow traffic from accounting to go to land. But if you don't do it this way, uh, what you basically have in this rule here, the first rule here says accounting can go to the ISP. So what you see is from anything from coming from the accounting land going outside, um, is allowed then um, and then the second rule says um, land to account and so anything coming from the land can actually go to the account so basically in this case here you might have some servers and accounting department that people in the land network you want them to access but you don't want people in accounting to have access to any resources in the land so that's why you would do a policy like this the third policy we have here says land to ISP it means the land people also can go to the internet as well so in this case you notice and the land can actually go uh, <laughs> this is actually very very nice land can go um, land coming from anywhere and then can go anywhere so land can go to the ISP as well of course we can see that we have some traffic already uh, in this case there is no traffic here because I've not assigned any uh, device to any of this network that's why you don't have any travel but normally once you have uh, a device in um, accounting vlan uh, you have a device in the land uh, you will begin to see some of this traffic as well here so and then the final one which is the implicit deny this basically means that any traffic that doesn't match this two I'm sorry, that doesn't match these three traffic, these three rules should be denied. So someone like anybody coming from accounts and trying to go into the land will hit this last one here because the rules are going as in are, are followed line by line. So you will first check the traffic is coming to from accounting and the traffic is going to the land. The first one says traffic coming from accounting to ISP. So that doesn't match. So we we'll jump to the next one. It's coming from accounting, but this one says land to account. So this one doesn't match. So it's going to jump to the next one. The next one says land to ISP. It doesn't match. So it's going to go jump to the last one, which is deny. So basically, that traffic will be blocked. So that is how to create um, VLAN and inter VLAN routing on FortiGate Firewall. Please subscribe, like this video. Um, if you have any question, please place it. If you have any comments as well, um, they will be well appreciated. Thank you so much for viewing.